Well, hello, and thank you once again for joining us. Disability Law Show. John Scholes here along with Savannah Tumarkin, uh, courtesy and all part of Samfiru Tumarkin LLP. And that is going to be part of the topic of the uh, show today, Savannah. You, uh, you're denied LTD by your insurer. And what to expect when you contact and engage Samfiru Tumarkin LLP. It is all good stuff. So stick around for that. Reaching out throughout the show, we get to some emails, maybe some phone calls from our radio show. That is help at disabilityrights.ca. And we'll also refer to my disability questions com that website absolutely free and anonymous it's a wonderful resource for you you can simply go there type in your questions to savan or a member of his team the cool part is it's got a searchable database which means your question may have been asked in the past which is good you have an answer waiting for you if not leave it there and the team will get to you for sure so that is all coming up but we always start every show my brother with the week that was something that's been uh, you've been working on for the last a little while what do you got going on today yeah, John, it's, listen, it's been very, very busy. Again, uh, you know, these, these past few weeks, uh, my team has been engaged with speaking with people across the country. But really, the three provinces where we operate in, where we help people with their long-term disability claims, are Ontario, Alberta, and British Columbia. Let me tell you about uh, a, a call that I had last week with a gentleman, a 43-year-old father of three from just outside of Vancouver in B.C., uh, it, this gentleman suffers from irritant-induced asthma. So he had a, a, a basically an accident uh, a, a years back that created a flare-up in his asthma. Uh, and it's gotten to the point where about a year and a half ago, he was uh, basically forced to stop working. And he's a mechanical engineer by trade. Uh, and even though we're in COVID territory, right, this, these are COVID times right now. And, and of course, you know, he, he's in a very difficult situation because... He has asthma. Uh, that wasn't the reason why he stopped working. It was because his coughing and his breathing difficulties made it essentially impossible for him to uh, perform the essential tasks of his own occupation. And so he applies for long-term disability and he gets it with the, the help of his respirologist, his family doctor, the insurance company, his insurance company approves his long-term disability claim and he's on it. And so he's on it for about... Uh, it's about 14, 15 months now, and he recently got a letter, this just happened about a week and a half ago, from his insurance company, essentially pushing him to try to return back to work. And as you can imagine, you know, he's, he's of course very concerned with that. His doctor, both the respirologist and the family doctors, do not believe that he's ready to go back. But then after getting that letter, he got in touch with his caseworker, his adjuster at the insurance company, and lo and behold, they said, no, we think that you've been off work for long enough. We understand what your doctors are saying, but we think you should be trying to return to work. We're going to create a return to work program for you. And again, of course, just imagine the pressure on him psychologically as well as just physically, knowing that he's going to be thrust back into this work environment again during COVID times. And, and he speaks to his adjusters, speaks to his doctors, uh, and uh, his doctors say, no, you should be off work. And his adjuster comes back and says, after Labor Day long weekend in September, we are ending your benefits because we believe that you should be able to go back to work. So they've now given him an actual date, a date uh, at which his benefits will end. And so he calls me up in a panic. He's been watching the show in the last, uh, last few weeks. And he says, Ivan, what can I do about this? You know, is, is there any point fighting the insurance company? I don't feel I'm ready to go back to work. I have a long-term issue here. My doctors don't think I'm ready to go back to work. What do I do? Do I appeal this? What do I do? And I said to him, I said, no, no, absolutely not. You follow the medical advice of your doctors. If they say that you're not ready to go back to work, then you're not ready to go back to work. Your insurance company cannot force you to go back to work. And I want to focus on this, John, because many people call me and say, I'm being forced to go back to work. Remember, the insurance company cannot take a gun and point it in your head and say, you have to go to work. They can't. The most they can do is say to you, we're going to cut off your benefits. Now, for some people, that may feel like the same thing, like they're being threatened, their livelihood is being threatened. But this is when you got in touch with me. And so what I told them is, look, we're going to deal with the insurance company on your behalf. They've now told you they're going to cut off your benefits prematurely, which means you have a legal claim now against the insurance company. And we've dealt with many of these kinds of claims, John. I have resolved so many of these claims. As soon as we get involved, the insurance company typically backs off. And if they don't, then we go after them. We go after them. We don't let them off the hook. It's not something I expect people to do on their own, right? People like this gentleman needs to focus on his health. He needs to follow whatever treatments he's doing. He needs to, you know, stay home, stay safe. Let us deal with the insurance company. And I can guarantee you, John, I'll be able to resolve this case. Either the insurance company will back off 
or we're going to get them to the table several months down the road, and they're going to pay my client exactly what they owed him. Okay, so this is something really important people to understand. Insurance companies cannot simply wash their hands off of these kinds of claims. They're, they'll try to. They, they, they know that most people will walk away from the money that's owed to them because they're afraid to take on the insurance company, but you don't have to do it yourself. This is what we're here for. This is going to end up being a success story. We'll be back in the fall, John, and I'll relate what happened with the showman. Is that a very common timeline that I think you said 14 months till he got the, uh, the call, like, oh, we're getting out benefit. Is that a very common timeline for an insurance company or is it case to case? It's case to case, but typically we see this happening after the one year mark. You know, typically, right. again, yeah. with long term disability claims at the two year mark of being on LTD, that's when the test for disability changes from the any sorry, from the own occupation test to the any occupation test. Right. Uh, for the first two years, you have to demonstrate that you cannot do the essential tasks of your own occupation beyond the two years to get benefits beyond that. You have to show that you cannot perform the essential tasks of any occupation for which you're suited for. This gentleman here has only been on claim for about 14, 15 months, so it's a bit early, but I've seen this happen. I've seen this happen after six months of being yeah. on LTD. You know, insurance companies, listen, they're in the business of making money. If they can get you off claim now, they will. They're not going to wait for the two-year mark, which is why I tell people, if the insurance company takes an aggressive approach with you, don't sit back. This is when you contact us, and we'll tell you what to do. Sometimes we need to step in, sometimes with a few key pieces of advice that I give out, and I do this all the time, John, literally every day I respond to emails. Even before the show right now, I'm responding to a couple of emails from people actually in New Brunswick that have an issue with a long-term disability denial uh, uh, claim. And, and so I tell people, here's what you need to do, and if it doesn't resolve the matter, well, guess what? We can step in and help you. This is what we're here Wait. for. Way to reach out as well, 1-855-821-5900. We put that up in the uh, screen throughout the show, but just in case, help at disabilityrights.ca. And another website, uh, Savannah, I know you refer to, uh, you wouldn't think so by title, pocketemploymentlawyer.ca, obviously has to do with employment law, the other half of what your firm uh, handles. But there's a lot of crossover between the two. So tell me why people can go there and reach you and why it's of service of them as well. So this is a very good question, John. We are a very unique law firm. We focus on two specific areas. We don't do family law or real estate, criminal. We deal with employment law matters, generally for people who have been let go from their jobs or having issues with their employers, and we deal with long-term disability denials. And there is a crossover because many people on disability have issues with their employers and they need to know what their rights are. And many people who are having issues with their employers tend to be on disability or go on disability, either before they're having those issues with their employers or after. And the reason why there's this crossover is because, I'll give you an example. Uh, I, I was speaking with a gentleman just uh, a few days ago uh, that uh, was on long-term disability, is on long-term disability, getting LTD, uh, and at the same time, his employer just told him that he's gonna have to replace him. And so this gentleman is calling me and he's saying, look, I'm on LTD, but what do I do about my employer here? Uh, well, you know, you're entitled to severance. And the reason why the pocket employment lawyer is so important, that website, I deviated a bit here, but the reason why it's so important here, John, is because the pocket employment lawyer is a free website that we had created. Lior, it was actually his brainchild, my, my partner here. Uh, and we created this website to give people the right answers quickly, efficiently, anonymously. If you have an issue with your employment, uh, if you have an issue with your long-term disability claim, you go to Pocket Employment Lawyer and you will see, you will be able to actually ask your questions and you'll get a, an answer that is custom tailored to your situation. Again, it's free. And, and if you don't want to contact us after that, well, then you can just close the browser. But if you want to reach out to us and get more information specific to your situation, you know, click on the Contact Us button and we'll, we'll get in touch with you. But Pocket Employment Lawyer has been now used been used thousands of times across the country, John. I want to get to an email as well. That's help at disabilityrights.ca. First one for the, uh, the show today, Savannah from Lawrence. Lawrence says, I've been uh, receiving benefits for four years due to severe depression, and I see a psychotherapist regularly as my family doctor. Uh, my, therapy responds, uh, my therapist responds to the insurance company, but my doctor takes a long time to provide records and complains that he hates filling out forms. My insurer has informed me that they don't have his records and my benefits would be cut off if they don't have an update. What do I do? So very, very tough situation because insurance companies, John, are entitled to updates, to medical updates. Mm -hmm. uh, they, have, they have a right for that under most LTD policies. Uh, and frankly, generally speaking, you know, when you get LTD, you're not getting it uh, automatically until age 65. Now, this gentleman who wrote us this email 
has been on LTD for four years. So he's passed that two-year mark. That means the insurance company has already recognized that he's disabled from any occupation for which he's suited for by training, education, or experience. And so they better have a very good reason now for questioning whether or not he's still disabled, right? What are they doing here? They're saying as a result of not getting these medical updates from the doctor, they're going to have to cut him off. That's a technical reason. Now, I need to understand a bit more about this gentleman's situation. I understand he's suffering from depression, but I need to understand the severity because when you get past that two-year mark, it means that the insurance company is fairly comfortable that you have a disability that is fairly prolonged, right? It's going to be there for a long time. Uh, but what do you do in a situation where your doctor is refusing to fill out forms? Well, that is an issue. You may need to seek out the help of another professional. This person here has a therapist, so the therapist has been complying. But if the family doctor is not providing the requisite updates, it may be time to go to a different doctor. There's nothing else that I can recommend on that. What I will say this, though, despite the fact that this person hasn't been able to get updates from the doctor, if the insurance company cuts him off and he's still disabled, and the insurance company is aware of that, this person has spoken with the adjuster, the therapist has provided records, we can probably help them. We can probably help them, convince the insurance company not to cut the person off, or if they do proceed to cut them off, well then guess what, we're gonna go after them and make sure that they pay him what he's owed. And I wanna to get to one of the benefits of proceeding in that regard, but first we're gonna take, uh, take a short break. And when we come back, what you can expect if you hire Savan with Sam Firu to Mark and Law Firm, that is all coming up, 1-855-821-5900. You can also go to mydisabilityquestions.com as well. Coming right back, don't go anywhere. People think their employer can make changes to their job. EmploymentLawyer.ca says that is a myth. Your employer can't change your pay, hours, or duties. You may be entitled to full severance pay. Always check with the Employment Lawyer first at EmploymentLawyer.ca. Can insurance companies deny long-term disability claims for mental illness? When you're suffering from a mental health disability, insurance companies just don't understand. But we do. They can absolutely not force you back to work. If your doctors say you are not ready and you know you're not ready, they cannot make you go back to work. If you have a mental health disability and your claim is denied, don't give up. Give us a call and let us fight for you. Go to disabilityrights.ca, discover your rights, fight back, and get what you're owed. People think you should go to the government to get severance pay. EmploymentLawyer.ca says that is a myth. Government can only help you get minimum severance, but not everything you're entitled to. Always check with the Employment Lawyer first at EmploymentLawyer.ca. All right, welcome back, Disability Law Show. Of course, uh, we're going to keep going here with what you can expect if you hire Sam Firu to Mark and Savan. There's many things, but I think we've whittled it down to three or four uh, prime things that we're going to talk about. First one is this, immediate action on your matter, including starting a legal claim against the insurance company for everything you are owed. I'm going to underline the word owed right there, right? Yeah, John, you're right. Underline the word owed, but I would also underline immediate action because most yeah. lawyers not most, but let's say many lawyers, even the ones that I know, many of them are my friends, uh, and I've spoken to them about this, there, there is just a lack of urgency that lawyers just typically operate in, right? I mean, we all know the stories about these cases that, you know, people say, I've gone to a lawyer, it's been years and years and years, nothing is happening, nothing is resolved. And, and I, I don't understand that. I don't understand why lawyers take their sweet time. Now, listen, not everything is up to us, right? Sometimes there, there are time frames here beyond our control. But if you come to us, you come to me for help, you've just been cut off long-term disability, or you've been told that your, your, your benefits will be cut off, I'm not going to sit on your matter. None of my team members are going to sit on your matter. We understand the urgency. We understand that you need this money to survive, to pay the bills, you know, to, to, to feed your family. And, and so for us, you know, the idea that once you sign up, once you have us uh, help you with your matter, you, you retain us, we simply shelf your file and you know, just put it there and collect the dust. No, that's absolutely not what's going to happen here. So immediate action, what does that mean? It means that you know, we're going to obviously open the file at our firm. We're going to start collecting the necessary information and documentation that we need. Uh, we, we have a team for that. It's not the lawyer that's doing that. We have, we have assistants. We have clerks. We have a whole team. And the second thing that we do is we start that legal process ASAP against the insurance company. We want to get them on their heels. 
We don't want the insurance company to have time to breathe. They need to, they need to hear from us immediately. They need to understand that we're going to go after them you know, like a dog after a bone. They need to understand that your claim is our claim now. And so immediate action for everything you're owed is really our mantra. And listen, there is a reason why we have the Google reviews that we do. People can go out there, Google us. You'll, you'll see what people say about us, both on the employment side and the disability side. Uh, you know, we, we live to our, to, you know, to our reputation and to our standards, and insurance companies know that. They know that when we have, they have a lawyer from SD Law, from Sanfira to Markin, they cannot ignore the claim. They have to deal with it, which is why we resolve these kinds of cases within weeks or months of being retained as opposed to years and years and years later. Again, as you know, as, as we continue to chat here on the show uh, every week, you know, the, there's contact information pops up on your screen for San Firu to market. But we're kind of focusing on the benefits and why you should reach out to them uh, with your disability claim. Next one is this. Uh, we or they will answer all your questions and update you regularly about your legal case, including when it is time to settle the claim with your insurance company. Yeah, and, and you know, that's something, again, that's really, really key. In addition to immediate action, one of the major stressors that people have when they go to a lawyer is they don't get answers or if they get answers they get them at the beginning and then subsequently when they retain the firm or the lawyer they get ignored and again that's something that we do not do none of our lawyers do that and we're very very focused on making sure that you fully understand the scope of your claim what we're going to do for you what the steps are what to expect expectation is key here imagine going to a doctor with a terminal illness or a very very bad illness and you know being ignored by the doctor not being given the the answers that you seek it's only going to exponentially increase the amount of stress that you have and exacerbate your medical condition, right? It's the same thing with law. People are under tremendous stress. And so what we do is we make sure that you have the answers you need. And we'll tell you, if it's the right time to resolve your claim, we'll tell you that. If it's not the right time, the insurance company hasn't put enough money on the table, we will tell you that too. But here's the thing, John, we will never force you either way to settle or not to settle. We'll give you your options. We'll give you the pros and the cons. We'll answer all your questions. And then you are in the driver's seat. We'll tell you what you, we think you should do, but you control your case. It is your case. It's your money. And again, I've, I've done so many second consoles, people who are being, you know, they're with other lawyers, but they heard me on the radio or on TV. And they just say, Sivan, I just want to talk to you about my case. I want a second opinion. And I, I give them the information they need. And, and you know, I remember this, this one gentleman that uh, contacted me about uh, two months ago or so. He's been represented by someone for several years now, and really, his case should not have been going on for several years. It should have been, it should have been resolved within a matter of, of, of a few months at most. And I spoke with him for about an hour, and he said, Sivan, you know, within this one hour, you gave me more valuable information about the process and my case than this lawyer has for three years. Nice. And I said, well, listen, you're welcome. I'm glad you have it. It's too bad you didn't have it before. There's nothing yeah. to it. You know, so again, you'll get the right information, you'll get timely information, and that's important because you need to know what decisions to make on your case. This, this third one, Savannah, I think is the one that people will enjoy the most. In fact, it might be the most important off the get-go, and that is once you get involved with the insurance company, once you get your legal team gets involved, you're, you take over all communication with the insurance company, the phone stops ringing for your client, and it's like, it's like that first legal painkiller they pop, man. What relief they get because they no longer get the harassment from the insurance company. It's amazing. People don't realize that, do they? It, no, they don't realize that, and, and what, what irks me more than anything, I would say, in this situation is when people tell me that they retain the lawyer, but they're still communicating themselves with the adjuster. Yeah. And, and, you know, these adjusters, many of them, they're not bad people, but because they represent the insurance company, insureds, individuals who are disabled, whether it's a, it's a psychological disability, a physical disability, you feel, you know, your heart rate jumps, your blood pressure just shoots up every time you get that phone call or email from the adjuster. Guess what? If we get into the picture, if you've retained us, they're not allowed to communicate with you. They have to communicate with me and my team. We are that wall between you and them. And why that's important, number one, you're not going to make any mistakes because we're the ones handling the communication. And number two, you can focus on your health. And there's nothing more important than that. If you remember anything about what I'm saying here on this show or any show is that your health comes first. It absolutely comes first. So when the adjuster is harassing you or bullying you or you feel like you're being treated unfairly, when we get into the picture, if it gets to that, we are the ones pushing on them, not them pushing on you anymore. So this is key, John, because, you know, I've done consults where I've spoken to families for hours explaining their rights. 
and, and what they take away from it at the end is not even what amount of money they're entitled to. It's the fact that I take over all the phone communications and mail and yeah. email with the adjuster. To them, that is a huge, huge relief, and I understand that completely. Yeah. And I've spoken with, with psychologists who, who, you know, they were amazed when I told them that this is a the situation. They start referring me some of their, of their patients who've been denied LTD claims just for that, not even to get the money, but just to get the adjusters off their backs. Yeah. So I understand yeah. that, and this is key. This is key. We take it over all communications with the insurance company. Really important that you make that phone call. It'll be the last one you need to make for any law firm, sure, for, uh, for sure. Sam Fury with Tumark and 1-855-821-5900. Take a short break and what to do, how to tackle it if your insurance company is forcing you back to work. How about that? That's on the way. Disability Law Show continues. Stick around. People think you have to sign back a severance offer by a deadline. EmploymentLawyer.ca says that is a myth. Deadlines are used as a pressure tactic. Make sure the offer is fair before you sign. Always check with the Employment Lawyer first at EmploymentLawyer.ca. If your long-term disability claim is denied, should you appeal? Appeals often fail because insurance companies control the process. So long as you appeal, you're playing by their rules. You should never appeal the denial of your disability benefits. Appeals are just a mirage of false hope. Don't. That's their process. Take it out of their hands and fight for your rights with our help. Go to disabilityrights.ca, discover your rights, fight back, and get what you're owed. People think contractors aren't owed severance. EmploymentLawyer.ca says that is a myth. Many contractors are actually employees and are entitled to full severance pay. Always check with the Employment Lawyer first at EmploymentLawyer.ca. All right, welcome back. Thanks for sticking around, reaching out. As you know, it's simple, 1-855-821-5900. Help at disabilityrights.ca to reach Savan or James Tamar. Remember, their amazing team at the law firm. You can do that anytime you like. Okay, I want to get to a, another website, savanmydisabilityquestions.com. I mentioned that at the beginning of the show. It is a service provided to you where you can ask your disability law questions. There's a searchable database involved, so maybe your question has been asked in the past and answered. If not, leave it there. And a member of Savant's team will get to it. Phoebe is uh, the one we're going to in this regard. It says, I've exhausted my physiotherapy benefit after one year on LTD. The insurance company is refusing to pay for more treatment and insists that I'm ready for a gradual return to work. I have lupus and a history of muscle tissue loss that makes my recovery slow. For a movementologist and orthopedic surgeon agree that I need more therapy, can the insurance company force me back to work? This is a common question, John, and we started the yep. show by me telling you about a gentleman that I spoke with earlier this week that has a similar issue. You know, people need to understand insurance companies have no right, no legal basis for forcing someone back to work. They simply cannot do that. What they can do is they can cut off your benefits. They can tell you that if you don't do X, we will do Y, meaning if you don't try to go back to work, we will then cut off your benefits. And how do you protect yourself against that? Well, first of all, let's just dial this back, you know, to Phoebe Zemo here. If her doctors are saying that she's not ready to go back to work, that's the end of the matter, to me at least. It should be for the insurance company, but it's not. So what you do in that situation, Phoebe, is you go to your doctors and you actually get them to write another letter. I know it's difficult. I know doctors don't like to do these letters, but we need the doctor's help here. They need to explain in medical terms, why it is that it is against their medical advice that you try to return to work at the present time. Again, assuming they agree with that. They need to spell it out. We're not talking about simply saying you need time off from this day to this date, you know, on a paper napkin. We're not talking about that. We're talking about something more substantive. You then give that letter to the adjuster. You email to the adjuster and you say, I am going to follow my doctor's recommendations. Are you telling me, she should be saying to the adjuster, to disregard my doctor's medical recommendations. And, and you know, no smart adjuster is ever gonna put in writing that that's what they're saying, right? No, no, not, none of them is gonna say that, that you, know, you should be disregarding medical advice. What, what adjusters may typically do in that situation is they may either tell you uh, that they're gonna have you seen by one of their own doctors or assessors, or that perhaps they had your file reviewed by a consultant, and based on their medical opinion, they think you can go back to work. Or, or they just may actually back off if they get that letter from your doctor. 
But remember, the insurance company cannot force you back to work. And what I tell people is this. If the insurance company is start making moves to try and get you back to work and you are not ready, you have to be unequivocal. You have to say, I would like to go back when I can, when I feel that I'm ready, and when my doctors clear me to go back. But if my doctor has not cleared me back to work and I don't feel ready, I am not going to go back at the present time. And so if the insurance company then tells you they're going to cut off your benefits, you have to act. You have to give us a call. You have to contact us because that's the point at which we need to actually intervene and push back against the insurance company. And, you know, people may think, John, that this is very dramatic. This is not dramatic at all. I've written many, many emails to adjusters in these circumstances, and I basically put the adjusters on notice. And I said, you know, if you end up cutting this person off benefits, despite the fact that their doctors say that they're not ready, you're going to get that legal claim from us. And then guess what? You're going to have to get your defense doctor, uh, sorry, your defense lawyer involved. And your defense lawyer is going to tell you that I'm correct, that you cannot force someone back to work. So again, you got to stand up for your rights. If you don't do that, no one else will. If you have questions about your case, you come to us. And John, you mentioned that website, mydisabilityquestions.com. You've been giving out that website, I think, now for years. I answer questions from that website literally every day, on the weekends, all the time. And so if anybody is out there, they have questions about their long-term disability claims or friends or families, go ahead. Just take a look at that website. Chances are the question has been asked and answered. But if not, put your question there. I will answer it. It's free and it's accurate. We well, got a couple minutes left here, Savannah. I want to ask you, you mentioned the word going for an assessment arranged by the insurer. Do you have to do that? Is that mandatory if they ask for it? Yeah, you do. Absolutely. Uh, listen, it's the insurance company's right to ask you to be seen by one of their doctors. But, you know, one of the issues that came up recently on a case that I have is where an individual, uh, again, out of B.C., lives in a rural community and has been asked or told by the insurance company to travel, I think it was over six hours by car to see an assessor. And this person suffers from severe psychological issues as well as physical limitations. And now with COVID, you know, most of these assessments can be done uh, remotely. Uh, so I, I told him, I said, listen, no, you, you don't have to do that. You need to express to the adjuster that you are prepared to undergo an assessment. You understand that the insurance company has a right to send you to one, but that you cannot travel almost six hours by car to that assessment, uh, especially if they can do that online remotely, you know, by Skype or, or some other medium. Uh, that said, that said, you do have to undergo those assessments if the insurance company tells you to. But that's very different and distinct than the insurance company telling you to undergo certain treatments. Okay? When it comes right. to doing treatments, you should go to whoever it is you are comfortable with as opposed to whoever it is the insurance company is sending you to. So there is that distinction between assessments and treatments. Yeah, it seems, it seems interesting they'd send you for an assessment for one time, maybe with a doctor you've never seen on their behalf. Meanwhile, you've got five years of dealing with your own medical team. Seems to be a little bit of a weight differential there as far as who's legit or at least who has more sway, your own team. 100%. And, you know, it's very, very unfortunate when people get cut off long-term disability based on an insurance assessment when the person's own treating doctors repeatedly right. say the person is disabled. But that's when we step in. That's when we push back on the insurance company. You're not on your own. You're not alone. That's what we keep saying here, John. We are, this is what we do. As lawyers, we protect people against insurance companies. But you've got to take the first step and contact us so we can have that conversation. And, again, John, you haven't mentioned this, so I'll mention it. None of these conversations cost anything, okay? My team will speak with you, and we speak with people from all over the country about these issues for free. As long as you have the information you need to make an informed choice and decision about how to deal with your insurance company, we've done our job. That's the purpose of the show, of our radio shows, of MyDisabilityQuestions.com, the Pocket Employment Lawyer. It's to give out this free information to people out there so they can be informed and empowered. You want to catch our radio show, by the way, anytime, disabilityrights.ca. We'll give you a list and contact for stations that will carry our show. And finally, reaching out one more time, 1-855-821-5900 and help at disabilityrights.ca. We'll catch you again next time. People think you aren't owed severance pay if you are fired for a reason. Employmentlawyer.ca says that is a myth. Most for-cause terminations are false, and you are still owed full severance. Always check with the employment lawyer first at employmentlawyer.ca.